all on behalf of Beyond Law CLC and ULS Punjab University Chandigarh. So in yet another engaging session, but this time we thought that the webinars we have been holding have always been exciting in the in the sense of knowledge perspective. Since we have been holding webinars on different issues, this time, since as a lawyer, myself being a lawyer and Mr. Puneet Bali, a senior advocate, also who is a well-renowned lawyer, we thought that there are certain issues regarding the sports and its law. And there's not much law developed on that. The common person, the, the student of law, the lawyer, as well as anybody who's directly or indirectly connected with sports also, feels what are the rights, what are the challenges, what should be the contract, what, how, whether it should be taken as a career because since it has a short span, sports player all generally have a short span of the career. Whether these uh, children should take sports first or whether Uh, amongst us, we have been joined by Mr. Puneet Bali. I'm just checking as to whether Mr. Yuvraj has joined. Mr. Bali would just. Yes, yes, I think. Uh... Yes, uh, I'm seeing Yuvraj's iPad. We are unmuting him. All right. Yes. Uh, before we proceed further, uh, because Mr. Bali, we, uh, we have been meeting off and on in the courtrooms and nowadays on the virtual platform. The, uh, we can say today's event's main focus is on Mr. Yuvraj because he brings us the insights. Actually, we all develop the knowledge of law after going through the various case law. And he, amongst us, we have Mr. Yuvraj Singh who will give his personal insights. We will be taking questions and today's format is slightly different. We will ask certain issues of Mr. Yuvraj Singh, what has been journey? What are the challenges as a youngster? Uh, Mr. Yuvraj, uh, Mr. Yuvraj Singh? Yanji, I can hear you. Can you hear yes. me? Yeah, yeah. Everybody can hear you. And, Anji, namaskar. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Welcome, Yuvraj. A, yeah. Thank you, Sahir Sahib. <laughs> Looking sharp. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mr. Chatrat, I cannot see uh, Mr. Yuvraj. Uh, in that eventuality, you will have to go by the gallery view or whenever he speaks, because it's a speaker view, you will always see whenever, uh, let's assume I am speaking, I will come on the picture or once you are speaking, you will be on the main, main focus. The gallery, or it can be on the gallery, uh, gallery view. Because whenever you Raj will speak, automatically he comes in the center, the center stage. You, even though it goes without saying, today the entire center stage is on you Raj Singh. Uh, yes. We welcome you, uh, both of you on this platform. And needless to say, the participants who are on the platform, we welcome them during these testing times. We have to stand strong and we have to overcome. And we thought that during these testing times, why not bring a person who has been inspiration in his own way? How he suffered through cancer, how he returned back, what has been his journey as a player? Normally, uh, we don't see a player having a 19 years of journey and then during that missed period also having suffering from cancer and how, how to return back. So uh, first few words <laughs> from Yuvraj Singh, then Puneet Bali, then I will take certain questions from Yuvraj and we will also take questions from the persons on the platform either on the chat box or we will unmute certain persons and they can ask questions directly to Mr. Bali or Mr. Yuvraj Singh. First to Mr. Bali, slight introduction about Yuvraj Singh, though he don't, needs no introduction. And then I will ask a few questions from Yuvraj Singh. What are the, what normally we have received on the WhatsApp, what questions they actually want to ask from Yuvraj Singh. Yes. Uh, well, uh, hello everybody. It's uh, indeed a pleasure to be back on your webinar, Mr. Chattrath, and uh, discuss now, now today to discuss something which is a little bit beyond law and within law itself. Now, uh, I've had a very interesting relationship and friendship with Mr. Yuvraj. And 
as a young boy when uh, i was watching <coughs> the game between haryana and punjab uh, the news of birth of yuvraj singh came to the ground and i was supposed to run into the ground and give it give the news to his father mr yuvraj singh so that is how far back we go so i just ran as a small child into the ground and uh, i told mr uh, yuvraj singh that he had been blessed with a son and he picked me up and i almost went into space when he threw me like that uh, you know in his arms but, but uh, Yo, uh, yuvraj's journey as far as i am concerned has been very inspirational to all uh, people who are into sports who are into fitness people who aspire to become something as a small child i have seen him doing the hard yards getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning <clears throat> under lights with a plastic ball which would hurt really badly if it would hit, hit him and continuously relentlessly practicing going packing his kit bag going from one venue to the other to play matches and ultimately what we had was in 2000 the uh, the debut of uh, mr yuvraj singh in nairobi where he uh, won a match for us in his first game and uh, sent bowlers like brett lee migrat to all corners of the park and then rest is history uh, yuvraj's life has inspired people who are in love with the game of cricket people who are sportsmen people who thought that in their life because of some medical problem or some other issue uh, there is a full stop in their life but yuvraj's courage to fight a disease like cancer and to play with that ailment during the world cup of 2011 win us the world cup be the man of the tournament in that world cup talks a lot about his character and uh, his retirement after 19 years of serving the game of cricket we <clears> have <throat> every moment yuvraj has stepped into the field i have not seen such a flow bat flow such stroke making and whenever i look at the modern contemporary players and i see the players playing i always remember that yuvraj what came from his bat was absolutely special and with the advent of time i've always seen yuvraj being uh, getting more humble with success a lot of humanity involved a lot of charitable work which he does he gives a lot to the society and therefore it, he's a clear inspiration one of the most wonderful people of this country and we as indians are proud of him that is what i want to say. uh thank you mr puneet uh before we after having certain questions from yuvraj what was his journey how he inspires other people needless to say that he has inspired many people the cricket the field the fielding the fitness anything you can note Yuvraj is one name which automatically comes in the mind. And we will take questions. Uh, Mr. Bali will also take us to the what are the sports law and what is the issues which invariably arise. But since our platform is beyond law, CLC, meaning thereby we take issues of law and beyond law which relate to a common man also. So, uh, Mr. Yuvraj, <coughs> you are uh, welcome to the board formally. I would just like to ask that few questions do arise amongst the common man. Uh, like, to, uh, invariably you know that cricket, you have inspired many people to join cricket as a profession. But at the same time, it's a, again challenge to be amongst the first 16 in the Indian and to sustain that. How do you maintain, what is your take as to whether I, Student, whether a person who child who feels or his parents feel that he has the potential that he should take sports first or he should maintain the balance with the sports what is your take on that uh, thank you sir for having me uh, uh, on this webinar of uh, sports and law i think it's a very interesting topic uh, that we can talk about today and thank you to mr bali who's an ace lawyer and uh, you know uh, our secretary for Punjab Cricket Association. Um, the reason why I'm here on the chat, I think uh, uh, kind words from you guys and Mr. Bali about uh, 
you know how have i have been inspiration uh towards uh my fellow countrymen but um as i said as mr bali said it's a long journey and we will talk about various points but the points that you're talking about uh to start off with is uh, i think it really depends on uh, parents how to guide their children i think uh, like my father and mr bali knows mr bali is one of the very few guys who are uh, closely related to our family who who's trained under the coaching of my father and um, in today's uh, era we'll have very less fathers like that because coaching was very different at that time and upbringing of children was also very different on that time uh, i think a lot of parents a lot of parents in those times believed if they follow a certain path whether it was military or navy or sport or studies they were encourage their children to do the same and uh, so it happened with me as well as my father played for india and didn't play for a long time i think he wanted to see me in those uh, tri colors in uh, through his dream uh, but over over the years in the last 15 20 years uh, times have changed a lot and i feel from my upbringing and my personal uh ups and downs and experience and maturing at a certain age i be- certainly believe that we need to allow our child to uh, do what he feels like definitely guide him and uh, you know probably from the parent side or the teacher side guide him in the in the right sense but uh, probably not force things upon him because there are certain things children want to do they have their dreams and if they want to follow a particular path we should encourage them but i feel sports and uh, studies should be a part of their lifestyle when they're uh, when they're growing up uh, point well taken uh, mr yuvraj as as we all know that how you struggled with the cancer and sometimes in in the team and outside the team but you were always with been an inspiration but one thing which any cricket lover or any sports lover would be there or i go a step further even if he's not a sports lover that six sixes on stuart broad are the memories at least uh, i can say for myself that as and when i see on the platform those six sixes the name though it's uh, stuart broad i would correlate that it's not stuart broad i would say that chhati actually chodi ho gayi and that is why it is uh, you had hit six sixes to broad it so what was your experience and uh, at least i have not been able to sink that feeling of six sixes i remember i was in chandigarh club watching that match even still today when uh, i talked to mr bali that you were coming on the platform there were six sixes and while i am talking to you those six sixes on different directions still ring uh, ring within my mind my heart what is your what is your take on that yes uh, thank you for reminding about that it's a very special memory i think all the fans that who have logged on probably you know they put they put a six 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 story every day on instagram or social media and every time i open my phone it's like a it's like a constant reminder of six six is every day i think the value of six six is today is much more than it when it started because there was a, in 2007 you know it was the first tournament and t20 world cup and t20 was unheard of so i think um, it was it was one of those days where uh everything went in my favor i think in sport there are days uh when things are going well for you and there are days when they don't go well for you so it's like you know every day it's like life you have good days and you have bad days so sport is also similar to that and um obviously i remember i had two bad games before that and uh, we were we had it was a must win game and couple of months ago i i got hit for five sixes and over by uh, when i was playing against england so that really upset me uh and i think when i was when i got the, when i hit those six sixes i probably had an argument with one of the uh, england players called andrew flintoff i'm sure all the fans uh, recognize that memory and it actually charged me up and i wanted to you know give it a play back with my bat and so it was my day i remember that i was able i was hitting everything in the middle of the bat 
and obviously Stuart brought someone who was very less experienced and a very young guy uh, had to bear the brunt of it and uh, it was just my day I felt I think I was charged up and I was I was hungry for uh, winning the game for my country and you know it was destiny it was supposed to happen and uh, I'm sure uh, every time uh, 19 September 2007 every time we have 19 September in every year all the fans remind uh, Stuart God and uh, Freddie Flint of what happened that day. So it's like a it's like a constant journey. It's like it happened yesterday, but it's been almost like 12, 13 years. But thanks to the fans, you will always see those six sixes on social media almost every day. Uh, I will say that you are saying uh, only the September, but I feel that every day that is a special. I thought that after those six sixes. He should have changed his name to Stuart Thin because he just went off. Just we removed the paint from a th uh, paint by a thinner, so that that's the way. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I I also remember that after seeing you, like you said, the two games were bad, and then you came back bouncing. I'm reminded that it said that life goes with those persons. Uh, we symbolize that thing with the ball. The more harder you hit on the ground that ball, it goes much higher. I thought that they had dropped on the wrong side. And the day you befitted, I think that's an inspiration. If somebody, uh, I would say it is a cue for the children also. Let's assume the parents say that you are not doing anything. But in a befitting reply, they come out with a flying color. So let, not, let's not restrict to the sports itself. It's an encouragement that if somebody is conscious of hit in a uh, wrong manner, he should give. And then... Uh, you said that five sixes were hit and you hit six. I had always remembered an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth is one of the ideology. But I never realized for an eye, you can also take uh, two eyes. So in a right, right sense, which is a source of encouragement. You would also like to know that what was your journey and what was your schedule while you became a player? Because everybody feels, uh, they do not know what triggers a sports player feels. Everybody feels the glamour, the clapping, the... Uh, <laughs> Waves going on in the stadium or the people just going for the autographs. But what is the rigor so that people don't think that Yuvraj has made six sixes, it's easy for me to hit six sixes. He has got this glamour, he has got uh, so much advertisements, etc. What is your take on that? Uh, what is the schedule normally for any player who has to come, come to an Indian team? How many hours he has to devote? Sir, I think uh, cricket in our country has a lot of passion. It involves a lot of passion and People are crazy about the game. Uh, in our country, if India wins, you know, people feel that they have won. If India loses, people feel that they have lost. So they take the wins and losses very personally, which is good and the bad side. So, uh, you know, eventually when young kids come to the block and they perform, you know, the media and the people, they make them superstars. But eventually, when they have a, go through a bad patch, you know, media scrutinizes them and makes them villains. That's the part of our culture and that's the part of media and people, certain media and certain people you have to realize. Uh, I think uh, growing up uh, for me was, uh, I was, I was into a lot in skating and um, tennis. I wanted to be a professional tennis player uh, or, 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 a, a champion skater. I was at the age of say 10 and 11 where I was, I didn't know what my direction was in life, but I was, I was never keen on playing cricket. And uh, I was, I remember I was in YPS. Uh, at the, I started to play cricket because my father was you know, forcing me to play cricket. And I went to YPS school in Mohali. And I remember uh, the cricket coach was not there and I started to play tennis. And he actually came from nowhere and he said to me that, uh, Yuvraj, your father is not going to like this if he sees you playing tennis. So, uh, it, was, it was disturbing those times. But eventually, when I, when I got the hang of cricket, I think my father knew that I had cricket in me. And then uh, uh, there were times where I was woken up at 6 in the morning. Uh, you know, probably had to go for six to ten miles of running and then my father would be 
coach of uh, DAV College Chandigarh, where Mr. Bali is also studied, and has been a victim of uh, of his coaching. So, <laughs> so I'm sure he can relate to that. And probably we we would you know run a lot, and we would I would have to bat from the from nine o'clock to twelve o'clock, have a two hour break, then go and sleep in the afternoon, and probably have to come back and again bat. Fielding, bowling for the next three hours, and then evening uh, we had a garden in our house which was replaced by a cemented wicket, which my mother was very upset about. Where I had to uh, play one hour of uh, short bowling, short pitch bowling, which are called bouncers in modern age, with plastic balls, uh, with wet tennis balls, and sometimes wet leather balls. And I was not allowed to wear a helmet till the age of sixteen. And at the age of 16, when I went to England, uh, when I went on England tour, I felt the fast bowlers was were really quick. And I came and though I did really well without a helmet, but I came and requested my father that I would I should be allowed to wear a helmet, and so on. Went to play under 19s and then played the under 19 World Cup. Uh, yeah. Uh, the point well taken from all this is that as a child. Uh, from you, it has been understood that sometimes a normal person or a youngster feels that his career is on a different tangent. But as they say that the teacher or a parent can actually see what is the talent and the potential. As you have said, your father saw that you had a potential in cricket and he also wanted that he couldn't play to that much time. So, fulfilling the aspiration of father, they say that once the child does better, there's no better relationship than a father or a mother who, feel, who feels more happy that the child is doing better. So, I would just ask, also ask, like to ask that you have seen uh, uh, as a youngster then so much limelight, especially that after six sixes, you are saying even 12 years have gone by and your, uh, this, your fans are not allowing that feeling to sink. It is well understood that if the fans have not been able to take away that feeling, why? Because we are also one of the fans. I could say that if 12 years the people have not stopped uh, thinking about those six sixes, I would rather say they are not fans, they are rather air conditioners. <laughs> <laughs> because that frozen feeling, because once you are frozen, that is the entire different perspective. And interestingly, uh, uh, Mr. Yuvraj, I can see your craze. We have amongst us, Monty Panesar uh, on the screen. We were unmuting him. We will just ask how his feeling is there uh, when, uh, when he was associated with you in the cricket. Uh, welcome to the board, Mr. Monty. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, and um, also, nice to see you, Raj, as well. You know, I interviewed his dad on Saturday, and he's a very entertaining guy. And, um, very nice is. guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, Yuvraj was always this kind of like a guy who can just take the game away at any point. And we, you know, as a team, we always feared him. You know, we just knew that he, he could accelerate when he wanted to just come in and, and just hit boundaries from cold. You know, there, there wasn't, I don't think there were many batsmen when, when I played one day against him, even during that time, that batsman could just, you know, hit fourth and sixes uh, at will, dominate oppositions, just, you know, just absolutely dominate them. And uh, he kind of reminded me of someone in between um, like Matthew Hayden and Gilchrist, you know, that sort of batsman where he could stay in, in there as well, but also destroy an attack as well. And, you know, he was just, you know, we were like, we were like this guy's just like way ahead of his years, you know, unbelievable talent. And 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 he didn't. In fact, it just went. It was just like everyone else would hit it. Let's say, just over the line, he would smash it into the stands. And you think, how, how far does he hit the ball? And I remember actually when Rod Marsh said to me, "There goes this one guy in India who hits the ball miles, and I've never seen anyone hit it this far." This guy's called Yuvraj Singh. And he goes, beware of him, mate. He goes, he can destroy an attack and everything. So, yeah, I, you know, I, 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 I witnessed that myself. And, yeah, he was just an amazing player. 
uh, any special moment which you cherish with uh, your Raj Singh, which you always carry close and at the same time? Um, he actually edged a ball at Headingley, right? And he should have walked. He knew he edged it. <laughs> 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 Nigel Long didn't give it out. You edged that ball, didn't you? Mate, the wind was blowing that side. I think it was going <laughs> the wind that took it. Yeah, definitely. The thing is that I, I had I had some horrible uh, innings at Headingley, but thank you, Monty, for all those generous words. Uh, I I had some horrible innings at Headingley, and I just was very desperate to score runs at Headingley. And uh, I definitely nicked that one off. Honestly, uh, 99 times out of 100, I normally walk. But, but at Headingley, that's the reason we were oh, playing at Headingley, I didn't walk. Oh, what, against me, I, just say, I don't want to get out to a fellow <laughs> Punjabi Sardar. <laughs> Simple no, as that, sure. mate. You got me out a couple of times in test matches. But I also remember apologizing to Matt Pryor. And I said, sorry, mate. But I'm just not walking at Headingley. And uh, I remember scoring 70, 78 odd runs, and I remember scoring them around 60 balls, and and I, I felt so satisfied, like scoring that 70 rather than the other innings that I scored runs. But it's nothing personal, Monty. It was just headingly for me. <laughs> well, there was another moment as well at Edgbaston where I, there was a mix-up. And he, I was bowling to him, and I bowled, and I bowled this, you know, flighted ball. And again, you know, anything above eye line just gets dismissed into the stands. <laughs> and uh, I got him run out from my end. And um, you actually didn't, you didn't come back out to shake my hand. I was like, is he taking it something personal? That oh, Monty, the worst fielder in the team. He must be, an, he must be some <laughs> unlucky batsman to get run out. <laughs> I actually. I didn't thought, I didn't expect you to move that quick and run me out. <laughs> I I actually wanted to get on strike because if I am on that side and you're gonna bowl towards me because I know if you bowl to Zahir Khan, you're gonna get him out. So I ran to take the strike and you run me out. You actually saved yourself because I would have definitely got after you that game. I know, I know. I, I, can, <laughs> I can tell in the body language once that bat start tapping. I'm thinking, right, I'm gonna he's gonna take me to the cleaners now. <laughs> And, um, you know, I remember you did that a couple of times. Um, I also remember your innings uh, at Chennai when, you know, the unfortunate attacks happened. And that was a big innings, wasn't it? Like Sachin Paji obviously scored that 100. But for you as well, you know, on a turning pitch, everything was in my favour. And obviously I, I didn't manage to get you out. But I could see the, the relief once you got your 100. I was there right next to you. I could feel like the passion, the celebration. It, it really meant a lot for India, didn't it, at that time? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we remem I remember get we guys, you know, got out early, uh, and uh, I remember Andrew Stout getting hundred in both innings, and you know, a target of three seventy five, and you are fourth day evening, and then the fifth day to bat it out. You're looking to draw the Test match, but uh, and it was a rank turner, and you and Swan, you know, I mean, I I certainly believe that. The year you won, uh, you and Swan were bowling the best in your career. That's the reason why England won in 2011. But coming back to 2008, uh, on that track, I felt that um, why were we were able to win the test matches because Seva gave us a great start and got us into a momentum where we could actually build on it. And uh, I was I was in and out of the test team uh, for a long time and. Because Saurav and Lakshman were there all the time, so it was hard to get a place. And you know, Saurav had just retired, so I was really desperate to make a mark in Test cricket. And I think uh, that inning find gave me a lot of belief uh, that you know I belong to Test cricket level as well. And uh, you know, against you and Swan, you know, playing on a rank turner, it was it was hard to score runs. But I think our partnership when it went. When we score, when we scored 375 runs, it's like it's it's almost unheard of scoring 400 runs on the last day. So I just felt that you know I belong to Test cricket, although I didn't play a lot of Test cricket because of you know uh, those early years missing out and probably then I got sick later. But I actually had a lot of sense of belief after that innings. I went on to score another 90 in the next Test match as well, 
So I think one of my defining moments in my career. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so as well. And uh, do you feel like, did you achieve everything you could in your test career or do you feel you could have played more games? Oh, no, I certainly have a lot of regret when I talk about test matches, test cricket. I, as a young kid, we played a lot of four-day cricket. We had very less of 50 overs then. I really wanted to do well in five-day cricket. I felt if you can, if you're a good player of test cricket, then one day and then T20 cricket becomes easier for you. And, uh, you know, six, seven years starting on my career, I was in and out because I was competing with Saurav, Lakshman and, um, you know, Sachin Dravid, uh, the four middle order batsmen. So, it was hard to get in there and played a couple of games in and out when Saurav retired. Played a few games and then I got sick. So, and it was really tough to come back to test cricket after I got sick. So, I mean, if you look at the long run, don't have any regrets like that, but probably would have definitely liked to play more test cricket uh, at the age when I was growing up. Because, you know, that's where you actually are the best years from, say, 24 to, say, 29 or 30, where you actually mature as a batsman. But uh, if you look at the whole picture, no regrets. Uh, oh, that's, uh, yeah. I, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Monty and uh, Mr. Yuvraj, the way we were all uh, set off for this. I just forgot the way you took uh, us on the flow. I forgot that we are on the topic of beyond law, uh, this on sports law and beyond. So <laughs> I thought that we had not even touched the sports law. So <laughs> it's more like a law. Uh, yes, I, it, I'm just reminded that it is law of attraction first, that we have all been attracted towards you and your journey rather than the law. So I thought that's a uh, few questions. <laughs> so at least we have touched one issue indirectly that it's a law of attraction. I, I suppose Mr. Puneet Bali, who is an ace lawyer, would agree to this aspect at least that at least we have ad addressed law of attraction, not strictly in the terms of law at least. Absolutely. Law of attraction and law of fanfare. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Mr. Yuvraj, and, people would and, just... And yeah. Vikas, before we start on law, I must... Uh, say that you talk about those six sixes uh, Yuvraj hit, but uh, being an uh, ardent fan of cricket and also of Yuvraj, I, uh, people sometimes do not remember. In the same tournament, his knock in the semi-finals where he got 70 odd runs against Australia and about 30 balls and uh, mesmerized the Australians with his batting. In the 2011 World Cup, again, the quarter-final innings against the Australians was very special. The NatWest Trophy, which we won, in which uh, Mr. Saurav Gongli, now the president of the BCCI, was shown uh, from the was seen from the terrace of the Lords, you know, uh, taking his shirt out and waving it. So it's not only the six sixes, but what is very special about the six sixes is this: that from that one six, Javed Miyadad hit us in 1986 in Sharjah. Yuvraj took the Indians to a journey of six sixes. That is most important. Uh, that's true. That's true. That's uh, Mr. Yuvraj, uh, as we're talking, we will also have the insights. It's a rare opportunity that like a person like Mr. Puneet Bali is an inspiration in his own way. That he has played Ranji. He represents BCCI. He's a secretary of the PCA. And he's uh, above all an established lawyer. In his own field, you, you name him, we had, had him on law kitchens, speaking what to talk on law. Then we had him on uh, scope of 482. So his, like you had that wide range of shots, he has a wide range of uh, establishing himself in a lawyer in a different league. Like we are awed by your playing style, we are awed by his style of presentation. Uh, before we take, now let's come, uh, let's be grounded on the law issue. As many of the players, especially the youngsters who come from the rural area, etc., they are invariably called upon to sign the contract, of coming from the small town, etc. What is your take whether they should take a call from a professional, a lawyer, and what are the issues he should see when he's to sign a contract in this regard? Uh, first of all, yes, you were talking about Mr. Bali in terms of you know coming and uh, you know giving his input. I think it's 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 very important for a strong administrator to come in the structure of cricket. I think we've seen that with. At a time, Mr. Srinivasan was a great administrator. And I felt the same way that, you know, our Punjab state needed 
uh, a very good administrator to run the cricket structure. And someone, luckily for us, who also played cricket. And in terms of the same thinking, so we need, you know, uh, we need more people like Mr. Bali to come into the structure of the game or, or not just cricket or any other sport. And when it comes to younger kids who are um, growing up and they're playing on international levels, they don't really understand law. You know, law is something which you learn from your own mistakes. You know, you probably understand uh, what law is. And after a while, uh, where you have the money, you need probably a law firm to, you know, help you out with your, uh, you know, what do we call funds or money management. Uh, I don't see that is, uh, that is something that the players have been doing since they were young kids. I think a lot of, lot of the young sportsmen, what they actually do is they, they save the money and they give it to their parents, thinking that that is their, uh, that is their responsibility to give it to their parents. And I think it's responsibility of the parents to actually be smarter and take advice from a friend who's a lawyer and how to protect their children. Because a lot of young kids come from very small backgrounds and they don't really understand, you know, what are they going to do with the money? I feel a lot of young players in the IPL are getting a lot of money and they don't know what to do with the money and they're getting distracted. You know, the focus sometimes shifts from the field. Uh, a lot of focus is on the IPL on pre-20 formats and 50 over formats. They're not looking to be really good test players. So that is a cause of concern. But I think going in the future, since social media is there, I, I, uh, I would definitely recommend the younger guys who's coming up uh, to their parents or their teachers to have uh, an advisory panel or advisory friend who's a lawyer to actually protect them from certain issues. <clears throat> because uh, certain issues like you have entered into a contract, we have seen, we have also seen, uh, and you have rather seen more closely, we have read it in the newspapers. There have been bans of different players like Azruddin, Sirisant, on different aspects in hockey, uh, Jagrat Singh, then Jwala Gutta on badminton. So you feel, and at least as a lawyer, I have also experienced that these regulations have not been regulated in the right perspective. Uh, the way the punishment is to be done, the way all regulations are to be done. Uh, what is your take? What has been your experience on that? Though we will take a legal um, suggestions, legal inputs from Mr. Bali. See, I think we need to follow certain rules of how internationally it's done. How internationally in America and England, how uh, how in sports players are protected. Um, and if they get into litigations or uh, in any kind of an issue where match fixing or any such scandals are involved, you know, there has to be a certain number of proof where, you know, the proof has to show that a player has been banned. I feel, uh, you know, it was an issue in our country where the, the lot of lot of names had come out of players uh, in match fixing, but because hence there was not enough proof, you know, uh, the matter didn't go ahead. So as Mr. Bali is someone who we should take a legal opinion on it, probably would have uh, something to something to put it in a in more uh, in a better prospect. Uh, that's true. The point uh, well taken. We will take. Take your pictures. We will ask Mr. Bali to give his insights. Then we will take, start taking questions. Only one question which uh, I have received from one Nitin Sharma. He is working in Indian Express. This is for Mr. Yuvraj. With sports world seeing the stopping of events around the globe in the last three months, we have seen some sporting events opening up. How do you see that? What is the scope of cricket during these times? Uh, this question is to me, Kaji. Yes, yes, yes. It's not legal issue. It's on, uh, how do you think that it will go about? I feel that uh, players' prote uh, protection should be the first interest. And then the fans' protection has to be the interest as well. Uh, I think internationally, if they're starting football and whatever sports they're starting, uh, they have to uh, make norms of social distancing. 
Now the issue is, if you play a sport without crowds, is it going to be that entertaining? Probably you might uh, get value on television, but might not get, might not inspire people who are playing sport on the field because end of the day you're playing for your country and you're playing for your fans. So how do you maintain social distancing uh, in crowds? Uh, whether you, uh, you know, you sit. When the crowds come in, you sit on a seat and you leave one seat and then the third, second person sits. So these norms have to be figured out before we start any sport. Uh, I think there are certain sports where generally they have a lot of social distancing, but uh, it can be an issue in a bigger country like India because we have huge number of crowds. And, uh, you know, because there's so much chaos going around coronavirus, we need to set our plans first and then integrate whatever sports we're going to play. Uh, probably, you know, uh, practice, practice having social distancing, go to a ground and get a couple of people to act as crowds and do that kind of uh, a performance where a match is going on and then see how it's going to be feasible in, in international games. I don't know, not the right guy to make comments on that, but that's just my personal view. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yuvraj. Uh, I just felt it was as good as six sixes being watched from the other side. And I, I realized that we were talking, we had to stalk on law. And Mr. Bali is just watching those six sixes. But Mr. Bali is another person, if he given a chance, he can even hit six, seven sixes in his six, uh, six balls while, uh, while delving upon law issues. I will ask Mr. Bali, because the time is also the essence, he will play just like T20 and that six sixes. Give us the entire gamut of the law, sports law, etc. Then we will take the questions. Over to you, Mr. Bali. It's uh, Mr. Yuvraj, thank you for giving your insights. Mr. Uh, yes, because now yes. Uh, you see we have a very strange situation as far as sports and law is concerned in India. Sport in any legislation as far as the as far as India is concerned is not defined, which is very strange. We do not have a codify law for any kind of sport or cumulatively all sports in India. So what actually happens is that every association which is privately run. It is not run by the government. Most of the association, sports associations in India, they are either registered as under the uh, Society Registrations Act or they are companies formed under the provisions of the Companies Act. Now, these sports bodies have their own rules and regulations. These rules and regulations talk about playing, playing conditions, sport itself, but also the rules in relation to the discipline of the players. Now, unfortunately, as far as our country is concerned, like you had asked the question to you, Raj, that there are certain people, they're youngsters from far-fledged places who get into the sports arena or they got get into a team. And then they have to maybe probably should take, uh, you know, help from a lawyer about their legal rights and what kind of contracts they should be signing, etc. But I feel this is where the sports associations have to step in because for some young children, as far as our, con our, our country is concerned, their parents might not be very affluent, very rich, sitting, uh, living in cities who would, have, who would have access to lawyers. So I think it's first most duty of every sports association to make the sportsmen understand along with his parents what are the broad do's and don'ts as far as sport is concerned, how do you interact, who you can interact with, what you can speak, what you can't speak, what actually is a penalty or a punishment vis-a-vis -a, -vis a particular sport. Like for cricket, if you temper the ball in a test match, you'll be banned for a game, right? But then do you bring, bring disrepute to the game like the sandpaper gate would happen with uh, Steve Smith and David Warner. Though the punishment was only one test, but the board decided to ban them for a period of one year because they had brought disrepute to the game of cricket as far as the country is concerned. So I believe the most important thing as far as our country is concerned, we have to come out with a codified law on sport. That codified law also should not impine upon the independence of every sports association to run their affairs. There should be no interference. So what should be there? There should the disciplinary proceedings should be left alone to the associations. In a codified or codified sport law, there has to be a tribunal which has to be set up, which has to be independent of the sports association. 
so any player who feels that he has been punished unnecessarily he goes and appeals before that independent tribunal made, made of juristic persons and also sportsmen so that he has an independent hearing what normally is happening with a sportsman is that that very association who he plays for is the is the association who punishes him for a particular act he does now it is quite it is always going to be there that the association who has taken action against the sportsman is always going to be biased and prejudiced in its approach so therefore for freedom for for an exact good decision on the issues relating to the administration discipline of an association there has to be a sports court there has to be a tribunal set up for the grievances of sportsmen there has to be no interference in the running of the sports bodies and that is how you you and make the sportsmen understand their rights privileges duties do's and don'ts now as far as law is concerned i'll tell you something very interesting you know we had the f1 race in india for the first time we had the gotham board circuit and there was a notification issued by the government which said that they will not consider f1 as a sport which is very strange because they said that driving a car is not a sport it does not involve any skill sets which was very strange and the organizers lost a lot of money because of that then we have had situations that where uh the court had to interfere because of situations arising of match fixing in cricket and we had the situation where the loda committee reform came in came in the bcci was told to alter its constitution there are some good things which have come out of it there are certain things which uh, which may be you know deterrent for the cricket itself then there are issues where sportsmen get government jobs people challenge that how are they playing professional cricket but and still a professional sport and still getting a government job because the government rules do not allow a government employee to earn from any other revenue other than the salary granted to him so these are very wide ranging issues which the legislators have to address they have to address it on three basic concepts an absolute freedom to a good sportsman to play freely and to be protected by the law not not to be haunted by the law one secondly do not interfere in the independence of associations who run the sport but make sure that as far as sporting situations are concerned sporting events are concerned the sportsmen are concerned there is an independent body set up to hear their grievances and any decision taken by them is binding upon the sports association but it does not interfere in their independence that is what i would like to submit as what is the position in our country about the sports law now as far as england is concerned we have monty on the screen and he he must have been educated by the english cricket board that you had a gaming act in england which was converted into the gambling act in about 2005 now like you had the instances of match fixing in in england in a game in relation to pakistan where three or four players of pakistan were actually convicted and they had to do some life they had to do some uh, term in prison they had to uh, have fines which they had to deposit so this is required if england can have that statute i feel india should also have that statute yuvraj was very right in saying that there have to be norms they you cannot have a situation where a sportsman does inherent disintegrity to the sport sport is a very pious thing it is it is something which makes the person the whole character of the defines the whole character of a nation so there cannot be a situation where a sport sportsman does something like which is called a match fixing or a something in relation to you know bringing disrepute to the game and he can go scot free with it and also there cannot be a situation where because of whims and fancies of an association they feel that the sportsman has done something wrong and he should be punished now i give an example of what happened with mr uh, kl rahul and uh, 
uh, you know, Mr. Hardik Pandya giving an interview on television. Though what they said was not very parliamentary. It was not very, uh, you know, decent. But there was a lot of media hype about that situation. But should they have been punished the way they were? Were they, were they to be reprimanded? Were they to be, you know, uh, kind of given some kind of, uh, you know, brainwashing on how to conduct themselves in public? Did the association ever tell them that these are the do's and don'ts? This is what, what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do? Because we must realize the lifespan of a sportsman is very small as far as his sporting is concerned. Once the sportsman is in a team and he gets out of it, to come back is very difficult. So we have to make a balance. We have to make a balance in what we call sports integrity. And we have to make a balance in that we have to make sure that only an appropriate punishment should be given, not beyond what the person has done, but also a person who has brought disrepute to the sport should not, not go scot free. Mr. Bali, I think Mr. Harbhajan Singh has also joined uh, with the video closed. If he's Mr. Harbhajan Singh, the, another darling of the Indian cricket, I will just ask him to show his video because he has posted that I am also there. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I think it's the right time to get introduced, Mr. Bali, to Mr. Harbhajan Singh. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, he has been eluding me since the time I have uh, took on responsibilities of the Punjab Cricket Association. Yeah, you're not the only one. He's been eluding me also. Uh, uh, just when we said that he should show himself, he has just logged out. <laughs> Be that as it may. Yes, yes. Uh, I remember Mr. Yuvrat Singh and Mr. Harbhajan Singh coming on the Kapil Sharma show. We thought that maybe it will not be a comedy show, but this time on a legal platform, we will be sharing a common platform with them. Uh, Mr. Bali, as you said rightly, that I have also experienced that large number of sports authority do not have a regulated this thing. More so, large number of players who have been banned and invariably they have come out uh, to the team back. There are examples of Jwala Gutta, Gurbat Singh, Sirisanth, where there's no regulations as to what, is, what number of EA should be banned, what is the procedure, like in a service matter, there are certain regulations. But at least even the principles of natural justice has not been followed. Could you just explain for a common man what, what would be the principles of natural justice which is required? Let's assume any punishment, etc. is to be followed. Let's assume you take, we take the example of KL Rahul and Pandya only. You see, uh, let's not talk about only cricket. Let's talk about sports in general. Any sports I'm saying, that's yes, why I'm yes. saying uh, Jwala Gutta, Gurbat Singh. Yeah, yeah. They're all examples yeah. where uh, they were banned, yeah. but because yeah. of non-following of principles of natural justice. I feel every sports body should have in its inherent constitution, discipline and conduct rules, which they should make for the sportsmen. They should make the sportsmen aware about these rules and those rules should be meticulously followed. Now, let's see this, these kind of rules are not there. The problem in our legal system is that, you know, uh, our legal system takes time to decide things as far as our country is concerned. The problem is that time is the only thing which the sportsman does not have. So I am worried about a situation where a sportsman is charged for a discipline, uh, for a discipline situation and he's punished for something and then he goes to a competent court of law and it takes three, four years for that competent court of law to give a judgment in his favor by the time his playing years are gone. So therefore I say that I do not want any legislation to interfere in the independent working of association. That is their right. They have to work independently. There cannot be any government control over them, on them, on their finances or what they are doing, what they are not doing. Everybody who is running a sports is supposed to be a person of good integrity and honesty. We should not be prejudiced about anybody's functioning and, uh, you know, label them as black sheep right in, uh, right in the beginning. But I always say that as far as sportsmen and con is concerned and sports issues are concerned, therefore I say there has to be an appeal tribunal in relation to all associations. All associations should man mandatorily be allowed to be a member of those that tribunal Every matter in relation to a sportsman should be sent to that tribunal. The tribunal should have an authority to decide the matter within a period of two months to three months. So that ultimately if the sportsman has not to be punished. He does not waste his time in 
fighting a legal battle rather than playing or fighting a battle on the sports field. Okay. Uh, like you have also represented BCCI, uh, yes. you had a rich experience while you represented BCCI. What was the issue of the BCCI with, which was in the Supreme Court? And uh, since you represented BCCI, what are the take as to whether, what is your call? Because large issues arise as to whether the RTA Act will come into being how they have to be regulated, whether they will be a state controlled. What is your take on that? You see, uh, I'll just give a very brief outview um, of what the matter was before the Honorable Supreme Court. It all started from match fixing allegations in relation to IPL. Then there was a report uh, which came about in relation to reforms after a judgment passed by the Honorable Supreme Court, which the Honorable Supreme Court felt very disturbed about the fact that cricket is India's main game and these kind of situations are happening. So, is there something more which is required for the conduct of BCCI? So, Honorable Justice Loda, who was the Honorable Chief Justice of India, a committee headed by him gave some report to the Honorable Supreme Court. And the Honorable Supreme Court ultimately directed the BCCI to implement that report. Obviously, we argued that there are certain uh, factors in the report which are impossible for uh, any for the BCCI to you know accept or to function smoothly. So there was some alteration as far as the report is concerned by judicial pronouncement by the Honorable Supreme Court. So that is what actually the scope of what the matter was before the Honorable Supreme Court. But I, as in all humility, as a lawyer, and this is my independent view, though I was defending the BCCI, and I was saying that was my job as a lawyer that I my mandate was that I should ensure that BCCI is independent, is not impeded upon, and the Loda Committee reforms are not thrusted upon the BCCI. That was my job as a lawyer. I was, I was to argue for the BCCI in that uh, concept. But something good has definitely come out from the reforms. I Now, if I say it as a person who's having an independent view, something good has come out of the reforms. But I am a very, very strong believer in the courts not interfering in the functioning of private bodies and associations. The laws are set up. If somebody has done some illegal act, there is an Indian Penal Code which takes care of it. If somebody has done an illegal act as far as the sports is concerned, there is general law, though there is not a codified sports court which I feel should be there for setting up of a tribunal, etc. But I feel that a running of an association is an independent aspect. People who do not run the sports bodies, people who are not there, do not know certain intricacies. And therefore, you cannot impose upon yourself or on the sports bodies that how they should be running their affairs. In my humble opinion, it will be a direct infringement of their right under Article 19 to run an association which is their fundamental right. And you see, uh, a sport association has to look after its finances. It has to do its budget. Now, imagine a government body interfering in a sports body and telling them, that this is how you have to spend your funds. Do not spend it on this tournament, spend it on that tournament. Do not create an infrastructure. Telling you to add members, members who are not effectively playing the sport, creating a huge financial deficit for you. So these are a lot of issues. But since the Honorable Supreme Court has passed a judgment and order, it is binding on all of us under Article 141 and we have to follow it. So I feel it is for the legislation to come out with a codified law to safeguard the interest of the sportsman and just to safeguard the integrity of the sport, but not interfering in an independent functioning of an association. Okay. And uh, Mr. Bali, I remember uh, since being a lawyer, you have also examined and you have also represented a large number of players like the boxing player, which in this thing, since we are not discussing the uh, issue is so broad that we can always come along. You have so much rapport with the sports players on different spectrums, uh, of not only on cricket but uh, Gita forgot. What yes. are the issues? Except for the banning, we have also seen that uh, players coming for an appointment after playing performing well. Just give one on that part, then we will take on Vijinder Singh. What was the issue which was there? We just want to give the people that what type of issues do arise for a sports player also. You see. Uh... The problem with a sportsman is that he is so much into the situation of playing a sport, playing his heart out and, you know, doing what his mind and body tells him to do in a sport. Then he starts conducting himself 
in the same manner when he goes out in public employment or in a public uh, appointment contractual situation. Now with these people, what happened was like, I'll just give an example of uh, Gita Pogart. She uh, was uh, inducted into the police by virtue of what she had done in the sport. And then she went to an election rally to campaign for a particular politician to get votes for him. So under her discipline and conduct rules, as far as her employment with the state government is concerned, it amounts to an offense. So now my, my again, my, uh, you know, theory comes in here that once a sportsman has got into employment with the government, has somebody counseled him or her that this is the do's and don'ts, please do not do it. Yes, she had to face disciplinary action and ultimately uh, uh, we had to be in the court to defend her. And similarly with Vijinder Singh, the issue was that he converted into professional boxing. Now professional boxing was not allowed in Olympics till the last four years. He got into the professional boxing and the issue got arisen that now he has been given a job of a DSP that is a deputy superintendent of police in the state of Haryana. Then how, if he is given a job, he is been given a job so that he goes to the Olympics and gets a gold medal for India or get a medal for India. Now, if he's turning professional, he's not going to go to the Olympics. So why should his em uh, employment continue? Then I had to explain to the court that boxing may be amateur and professional, but you have given, the government has given jobs to so many cricketers and that's all a professional game. They all get paid by the BCCI to play the game. So therefore, we had to distinguish that the person who goes, whether he becomes professional or not professional, once he is given employment, if he does not play the sport, I mean, he will, he will get money to play the sport. So either he'll have to leave his employment or he will have to leave the sport. So there has to be a special, uh, you know, kind of a thing given to the sportsmen, an exception being given to them, that this is allowed for them to do and this is not allowed for them to do. So that was the issue before the Honorable Court. Because I thought that uh, as we would be running short of time, I thought that let's have what type of spectrum of issues could be there. And yes. uh, Mr. Amdas has asked whether there are any sports policies slash guidelines issued by the government of India. What are the guidelines as to whether they regulate, as to how has to be they be paid, as to I am going a step further. Is there any regulation for payment of payments? Mr. Yuvraj can also pitch on that. And as to whether, uh, what could be the ban, what are the entire regulations? Are there any codified laws or what things do go about it? And probably Harbhajan then again joined up. Uh, if Harbhajan is there, I will just I'll request him. No, he sent a message. Okay, it's fine. If he's there, he will join. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, Bali, just explain on that aspect because this is one question which invariably bothers as to whether there is any codified law because though you said in uh, so many words, but again, that questions have cropped up. No, no, I had just explained they earlier there was a judgment passed by the Honorable Delhi High Court where they had, uh, you know, said that there has to be a codified law and uh, what kind of uh, sports code should be followed. And then the, uh, you know, the government was mulling out with the idea to come out with a legislation. But as far as my information goes, that no such legislation has come about. And uh, so therefore, uh, as far as the sport is concerned, it is still now, whether it is matters of disciplinary proceedings or it is a matter of match fixing, etc. is they are governed by common law as of today. Uh, then uh, do you believe that this game of cricket, uh, Mr. Sumit Kansar has asked, where, since there is a lot of commercialization, uh, mm -hmm. what is your take? It's a professional, this thing, or it's a, no, no more like a business? What is your take on that? You see, I do not like to call any sportsman, sportsman's hard-earned money, whether it is 5 rupees or 5 crores or 5 billion or million, as a business. Obviously, it's a profession. You take profession of sport. You are, your success rate is the lowest in any profession you will take in the world. You, even if you try and prepare for an IS or IPS examination, you'll have one batch which will have about 80 IS, IPS officers in every year, but only two or three kids break into the Indian team every year. So I think it will be very harsh to call the money earned by a sportsman 
as a business. It's a profession. He has so many angles to cover his body, his uh, physical good well being, his, uh, you know, talent in sport, then breaking into a squad, then getting into the Indian squad. So we are talking about cricket here. Look at how many, how much money the footballers earn. And they earn that money playing for their clubs, not even for the country. So it's a profession which pays you very well if you are the best. And I think that is one of the things which enlightens this ambition to become a great sportsman. Why should a youngster not aspire to become a great sportsman to say that I'm going to have fanfare and I'm going to have a lot of money? I think it is, it is a very attractive proposition for a very, very difficult profession. Uh, do, do you believe that there should be certain regulations and legislation and what is your take how the, that legislation can be put forward or there should be centralized uh, regulations for all, let's assume for punishment or any other regulations which have to be done. Do you believe no, that no. there should be... No, no, not at all. All the disciplinary issues have to be left alone to the associations. I do not like interference in the working and functioning of association by outside bodies or especially by the government bodies. I again told you that under the ages of a legislation, there should be set up an independent tribunal to safeguard the interest of sportsmen and that's all about it. But to make a legislation to run an affairs of an association, it will totally finish the sport in the country. Oh, uh, oh. Any then, kind of uh, yes, yes. Uh, another question what uh, is being asked, uh, though this question has been posed to Mr. Yuvraj, Mr. Yuvraj Singh uh, expresses in his own way and then uh, you can uh, pitch in that. Things like Selva ban or th having artificial things to shine ball etc. is there for which no contract measures are issued. How do you believe that uh, there should be regulations or what is your take on this? Um, well, I strongly, strongly believe that when we start cricket or you know whatever sport is uh, is around you know putting a, putting saliva on the ball or whatever touching the ball with your face or mouth. I think uh, you probably have to start start with that by not using the saliva because you know, coronavirus is quite deadly and it can spread very quickly. So I think that is the right call they have taken to start it off with. But uh, in the long run when and hopefully it disappears, probably the norms can change around it of using the saliva because you, you sometimes in uh, tough conditions where the ball is not swinging much. You have to use saliva to make the ball swing and, you know, uh, swing or seam. So, in the long run, um, probably the norms can change, but I think it's a good way to start it. Uh, then, the other question is, uh, do you believe that there can be legalized betting? What is your take on that? Uh, legalized betting? Yes. Uh, I don't know, not the right guy to talk about it, but my view would be, uh, you know, match fixing is very different from betting. Uh, like in, if you see internationally, you know, betting, you know, not only just sport, not only just sport, like not only just cricket, people have online platforms where they actually, you know, predict and win money. So, is, if that's considered as betting, then, you know, I'm not the one to say about it. But I feel match fixing and betting are two separate issues. And uh, we definitely, as Puneet Ji said, that we need to define and put in a certain norms, or put in that, uh, you know, put in the law for what are going to be the repercussions if, uh, if you get involved in a betting scandal or a match fixing scandal. So I think it's something which probably the, go the governing body of sport and the lawyers have to sit down and probably decide. As Puneeji said that we don't know what direction we take in our country because uh, we don't have norms for people who have been acquitted in match fixing. 
so we need to have certain norms where there are certain things uh, you know are written or you know implemented in our systems so it's actually it's actually a it's, it's a very long process because internationally i don't know there are different norms than in india the norms are just not uh, not justified or also not explained properly so i think it has to be explained properly and put in the system uh, this question is to mr bali they say uh, we invariably see in different sports authority uh, sometimes there is not a fair elections do you believe that there should be elections number one and number two what are the steps with which the elections can be much fairer sorry what are the elections which in what context uh, are you talking about elections uh, elections of the uh, any sports authorities who select them i can read the yeah. question fully i i think elections could be a way out i am again not the right person to talk about it but we need ha ji bata ji kya keh rahe no i am saying uh, mr bali can express the yeah. legal inputs along with ha, me absolutely because the two things i'll answer you straight away as you see in the loda committee uh, report there were some suggestion that betting should be legalized in india like it has been legalized in england however that did not find favor uh, with the court and uh, the indian government has not come out with a kind of a legislation like the england has uh, like england has the gaming act the gaming and gambling act which is uh, which was earlier there and uh, you know uh, betting on games has been or gambling on games has been uh, uh, there for a very long time it has been horse racing then it has been in football games so my take on it is that if people want to gamble on it as far as it does not touch the integrity of the sport it gets go you good revenue it gets a good revenue to the government there should be no harm in it there are a lot of countries which do it but can we as a country with our fabric and character manage it that's another issue now as far as the elections are concerned to a sports body you know in every sports body and association there is a charter for election where elected person persons are elected from time to time the normal grievance of every person is that one person or a, a group of people always get elected and reelected and they never leave the association right so that is basically where you talk about the fairness of elections i feel as far as the election is concerned if not conducted properly there is a remedy in common law as far as repeated election of certain people again and again to store sports bodies is concerned it is there are two point of views to it there are people who are working in the sports body for like say 20 years 25 years the fifa boss who unfortunately expired 2 3 years back at the age of 90 was running the fifa for 40 years almost and he was running it beautifully so the question there are a lot of people who dedicate their life to sport and do nothing else but they are a part of the organization and they keep on getting elected and the other point of view is that the other people never get a chance so i say in a democratic setup if it is democratic and if it is genuine the members are genuine if one person has the tenacity or the fan following that people elect him in a democratic process again and again then let it be i mean can we say do we put a embargo on one person not to be the prime minister for 20 terms in this country no we can't do that we don't have any such law even in the representation of people act but now you look at the law as far as the us is concerned you can be a president for two terms consecutively not beyond that so it all depends upon a particular association if the association feels that they want to give continuity to a person and let him continue if he's popular enough to be elected or reelected it is their take if the association feels that yes two years two terms or three terms is good enough youngsters or new people should come in then it is their take i as far as my personal belief is concerned i feel that tenure should be long enough for a person to be attracted to come to a sports association because 5 6 7 years is a minimum time when a person should be given to make or create something but i always feel that every tenure or everything should come to an end and new people should be given a chance uh mr bali though it's not a direct question with the legal mr yuvraj singh and your insights if it can actually help uh, mr harshad joshi is time and again asking what books can i refer for sports law i don't have financial capabilities to go abroad to learn it uh, what is your take 
are there any books available on that you see what is the latest uh, buzz on sports law <laughs> sports international arbitration now if you go on the net you'll find how to uh, you know get into that how you study sports law uh, i do not know of a lot of institutions or universities who directly teach you sports law in this country so you'll have a little, little bit of a difficulty but if you look on the website now international sports arbitration is a very very big and uh, uh, financially very big phase of law or a arena of law which you can work on uh, one one question has been asked like vrv was playing for ranji trophy and he had been appointed and then ultimately since he was playing for uh, the ranji trophy he was thrown out do you feel that there should be some method to regulate in such like condition that who is being selected uh, on the basis of his sports abilities no, no, I, I, don't, i don't get the question the question doesn't make any sense pitaji ji question ka i don't understand this question doesn't the make question any doesn't sense. make any sense he I says you right vrv was thrown out of i am also not very aware he has posted a question that vrv was uh, thrown out of his services because he was playing ranji trophy no i don't think some anything there like is, that that's a that's that a wrong allegation that that is wrong that's incorrect okay. wrong in and fact, uh, in fact the governments have always been supporting people who have played for india and uh, even as uh, state of haryana you know granted an appointment to mr joginder singh who uh, i think bowled one golden ball of his life he got misbah out in the <laughs> t20 world cup and he became a dsp after that mr balwinder singh sandhu one bowled one golden ball in his life getting uh, probably gordon greenwich uh, out uh, bowled in the 1983 world cup and he is made a killing out of it what's wrong in it i mean i do not i have not heard of any thing in relation to vrv getting out of employment because he was uh, uh. In fact, I had also not heard it, not not read it. My knowledge, it is all trash. And V R V is a very good kid. He is a he is a boy who's uh, served Punjab well, who served India well, and he is now I think the coach of Chandigarh administration. I'm and I I am told he's doing very well. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, he's also been appointed coach this year of Ranji Trophy, and under his uh, coaching, they have won ninety percent of. 95 90 percent of the game, so he is actually had a very good stint at Chandigarh uh, Cricket Association. I almost feel like kidnapping and getting him to Punjab. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think on after hearing on this platform, he can take you and actually come there. And uh, Rohit uh, Ro Rohit Suri Sethi asks, "What is your take on sledging and how it is relevant in today's session in cricket law sector?" Uh, this is a question to me or you, Raj? Anybody can you answer? Mr. Bali can answer it because some questions are primarily board based. See, on uh, all right, I I only say this that there is the sport has to be exciting. So it is it is not exciting to watch a fast bowler, uh, you know, um, bowling a bouncer and then saying sorry to a batsman. I would not like to watch that kind of a sport. I would like the fast bowler. to hit a batsman stare at him and the batsman staring back at the bowler because that is where the competition comes in and as far as sledging is concerned something which is uh, sporting which is fun absolutely right but i absolutely detest in the form of sledging racial slurs uh, talking about anybody's caste talking about anybody's religion now that has to be codified as far as cricket is concerned it is already codified you cannot do it but sledging also have has different dimensions and i always remember this on the lighter side in an australian tour where andrew simons and uh, mr harbhajan singh had a little tiff on the cricket field and uh, mr andrew simons claimed that mr harbhajan singh had called him a monkey right and mr harbhajan singh said that i had not called you a monkey i had actually abused you in the name of a mother of, of the mother but andrew simons said that that is fine but monkey is wrong so it's 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 everybody's perception and uh, you know what happened after that is all, it is all history so it's all what what a person takes offense to maybe mr andrew simon thought that it was a racial slur against him and uh, mr harbhajan obviously did not understand what he was saying do both of them did not mean anything <laughs> <laughs> so i mean it was very surprising for mr harbhajan singh to understand that oh i call him a monkey which in india anybody you call a bandar aa gaya you know that kind of thing 
and he said that i have abused him in the name of the mother and he says it's okay he's okay with it so it's very strange you know sometimes uh, person's personal thought always uh, you know interferes interferes in what kind of sledging he faces but as long it is it is parliamentary it is in good fee uh, it is in uh, you know uh, good spirit like yuvraj uh, faced uh, you know sledging from kevin peterson on his bowling if i remember correctly oh i love that sledge when he called yeah, me the bye chakra and i i think he had some uh, candies uh, spread on the cricket uh, wicket or something like that uh, jelly beans am, am i right something like that happened and uh, but that was all good fun that is that is all in the good spirit of the game if you see if these kind of things are not there in sport then who's going to enjoy it but never That's, cross the line never cross yeah. the line uh, thankfully he hadn't come to mr bali he would have said that uh, mr harbhajan singh never said uh, uh, he intended to say man ki you should hear me uh, hear my man ki baat <laughs> <laughs> because monkey would look closer to it's a monkey bath uh, uh and then mr uh, uh, modi was not the prime minister then no but monkey bath is that. always there anybody who gives to the uh, they say that the heart is on the left but it always thinks right yes yes uh, uh one question uh, since we would be running short of time then we will have certain intakes how do you uh, this thing uh one question one is asking whether there should be one unified codified law for all sports mr bali or there should be separate codes for all different sports no no i have already answered that question and i have said a lot about it i feel that there has to be no interference in the working of an association but one code as an appellate court for disciplinary issues in relation to sportsmen or any other disciplinary issue in relation to members of an association that's all nothing beyond that uh Uh, thank you as we generally go by 1 uh, hour 30 minutes and it was a vast topic but at least uh, we can say that the trailer is there some people have posted uh, to ask mr yuvraj singh it's beyond the sports law and beyond he says that what is the best moment of memory which you remember besides what you have enjoyed as a cricket it, it, while play, uh, being a sports player uh i mean there will be lots of memories where we won some major championships uh personal records like six sixes but i think personally winning the world cup after 28 years uh and winning it in india and uh, you know especially doing it for sachin tendulkar the guy who actually deserved the world cup trophy more than us was a very special memory can i can i ask you raj a question definitely definitely he is on the platform because of you no no, no. i am the platform because of him both ways uh, uh, yuvraj everybody talks to you about your fondest memories in cricket can you can you tell me only i have always wanted to ask you this question can you tell me two things something on the cricket field which really really uh, you know disturbed you or which was not a fond memory like the reverse of a fond memory and what is your most important turning moment of your life as far as your sports career is concerned and your general life is concerned uh most one of the most dis- there have been couple of disturbing moments in my career um Uh, it's not easy to talk about them but i can probably say one or two uh, i was i was uh, in the ranji trophy camp i was 16 years old 15 or 16 and uh, and one of and me and harbhajan was just there to you know pick balls for the seniors we hardly would get a chance but we were in the team and i remember in the nets one of the guys hit a big six and the ball went over the fence mm mm-hmm. and i was trying to get the ball but there was a there were young kids and i told him to throw the ball and i remember the coach telling me ke ja ball utha ke le gaya cricket tune khelni hai tere baap ne nahi so i remember that was uh, pretty disturbing at that age uh, when i was about 16 and uh, then i was playing a test match against australia Mm-hmm. and they uh you know were uh, number one in sledging 
and then now I don't know who it is. And I remember uh, Shane Warne sledging me, mm-hmm. and uh, which actually I can't really um, say right now uh, on um, on the public platform. But I thought that it was very disturbing, uh, and uh, pretty much the whole group. You know when they start sledging, so you know it actually thought that okay, this is what international cricket is about, and probably you know th- there's going to be a time where we have to start giving back to them, and um, we waited for our turns, and we remember 2007 World Cup when we we had no seniors. There was Sachin mm-hmm. was rested, Rahul, Saurav were rested, so we actually were a young bunch of them decided that. We're going to get after them. And we sledged them. <laughs> uh, how they sledged us, we sledged them twice, uh, you know, twice more or something like that. So, we waited for our time, basically. So, young guys, wait for your time. Your time will come. Be patient. And, uh, and, and what about life? What about something most disturbing and most happy in life? Money. Most disturbing things in life, uh, well, um, <laughs> I mean, there has been a lot of disturbing moments in uh, in a growing up years. Uh, but I would say most disturbing, I think, was probably hearing the news about cancer, because I remember I was peak of the world. I was peak of my career. Mm-hmm. We won the World Cup. I was man of the series. I think that news was very disturbing for me and the family. Uh, so yeah, I would pretty much say that had was the most disturbing news at that time. But eventually, I you know prevailed and overcome, overcame it, and uh, it's just a bad memory now. And your biggest motivation in life, your top most motivation in life, what actually motiv- motivated you to be what you are, what we see you Raj Singh today. What motivated him? One single thing. That that's it. Yes, that's why I want to be Yuvraj. <clears throat> I Mr. think Bali, I will say not only Yuvraj, uh, uh, the insights what Mr. Yuvraj will say uh, that will be just just he used to do the ad. Yeah, Dil Mahange more people actually want to listen. What is that uh, killing spirit to do that better? And uh, people are just posting on the chat and, and otherwise also on the WhatsApp that once you heard this of cancer. How did you cope up? How did you come back to it? It's an inspirational story we would like to have. I, I just wish somebody made a biopic on that. Well, uh, coming back to Mr. Bali's answer, I think motivation at... Motivation was always my dad in cricket. I think uh, I was someone who was trying to achieve his dream. And uh, I think after two after the World Cup, I think the motivation was... To prove, uh, you know, I can still do it to myself because obviously the whole the whole world is when they're against you and they said you can't do it and mm-hmm. I mean you can't just go against the whole world but you gotta prove it to yourself that you can still do it again. Um, and uh, so, I said, what was your next question about the journey? Uh, no, uh, you suffered that, but what was that uh, thing that you that willpower? What is that force which made you do better? Like you de- said that your father inspired you to do better, uh, play sports. But that cancer part is just, uh, I can say, just disturbs anybody. But still coming back, it's an inspirational story for anybody. And then you're running that society, people helping that. What is your uh, take on that? And how did you cope up with that? How did you make yourself mentally, mentally stable? Um... Mentally and physically also. Obviously, it's a very, very different sort of this thing. Well, obviously, it's it's a long topic to discuss. But I'll what I'll put in brief is, um, you know, it was it cancer happened happened at a time when uh, I was the peak of my career, and uh, you know, I was looking to you know play test matches at that time. I had finally got a place. Uh, so it was hard to come to terms with it uh, because as a young athlete, you know, when you're playing for your country, 
and you train hard, you eat well, and you know you're playing you. It's hard to accept that it can happen to you. But you know, eventually coming to terms with it took a long time, and not not going for the treatment, and eventually going for the treatment and understanding that anybody can go through it. Uh, well, you look at it. Unfortunately, fortunately, you know, I came out of it. Unfortunately, happened at the wrong time, but. I think inspiration that time was reading a lot about Lance Armstrong's uh, comeback, and then the reason that I thought that I wanted to come back was that I wanted to play cricket for India again. I was very determined to make a comeback because I thought I could still do it, and I think those are the things that uh, kept me motivated to come and you know do something which is uh, next to impossible. I think that the word, as they say, impossible. The ad, the ad line says that impossible actually means I am possible, and you have actually shown that. And Mr. This is a common question to Mr. Bali as well as Mr. Yuvraj Singh, that people are saying that both of you have excelled in your own fields. You have created your own niche. What is your take to the youngsters? What they should do to become a very successful person or whatever career one wants to take? Yuvraj, you can uh, answer it first. I'll answer it after you. To young kids, I would like to say that uh, don't take the shorter route. Uh, uh, don't put your energy into uh, bad company. If you are hurt and uh, if you are disturbed, put that put that energy into something good. Which can create a future for you, and uh, you know, uh, success is not an easy road. It's a very long, it's a, it's a long road. It's a long way. Don't take shortcuts because eventually you will fall in shortcuts. Uh, and believe, believe in your dreams. Uh, I feel dreams are made of you, and you know, when you dream, you know how it feels. uh when you fulfill your dream uh what i would also like to say is never give up uh because you don't know when you climb that mountain what lies ahead of you pretty much yes i i will absolutely endorse what uh, mr yuvraj has said but i will always tell every youngster that the only thing they need to do is to keep their mind healthy and their body healthy and to keep on working to keep on working hard whether it is sport whether it is education you have to just keep on fighting and just getting up every day and making yourself believe that you are the champion and you can do it don't be over ambitious just be hard working everything will fall into place and secondly i tell this to every every youngster and i take a leaf out of what yuvraj told us right now that he when he was 16 somebody told him that ye cricket uh, tere baap ne nahi khelni tu ne khelni hai right so there are two ways to look at it one youngster will look at look at it as a problem and he will say oh my god somebody has tell, told this to me yuvraj looked at it as a solution he said that this has happened to me so my solution is that i am going to become the greatest in the country one day because of what has been told to me so i always say in your life try to find solutions do not discuss problems if you have a problem you find a solution you will move ahead if you have a problem and you keep on thinking about it you will be in the reverse gear so feel motivated live healthy live strong and just keep on doing your thing everything will fall in place uh one relevant question has come from uh vishal bagde he says this is primarily more focused towards yuvraj singh taking into consideration your experience of dealing with a deadly disease like cancer what would you advise to those persons who have been diagnosed as covid 19 positive in this pandemic what would be your motivational words to such people how can they overcome that mental pressure when people life has become full of uncertainty vikas ji first i would like to say that ke... हमें एक घंटा चालीस मिनट हो गए राइट न्यूज अक्रॉस इच अदर वी शुड नॉट 
spread fake news we should try and uh, get healthy in our body in our minds probably with meditation or training and make the best use of this lockdown because eventually life will get back and we all as indians and around the world people we believe that doing positive things uh, you know things will get back i know it's a tough year for everyone in terms of everything but i think we all need to have that belief that one day we are going to rise again but do the do the right things in these times you know motivate others help others reach out to people who don't have food try and you know make sure everybody gets food try and make sure everybody gets shelters in storms and uh, you know be a human it's i mean it's you are a human being but uh, being a human is very different from being a human being so this is a time to show that you you are a human so i think it's testing times for everyone and everybody has to believe that one day we will all going to come out of it uh thank you mr yuvraj we couldn't have expected uh in fact when you said it's one hour 40 minutes it's just like a, a full t20 site which we are seeing <laughs> <laughs> and to engage you for that this much time uh, we are quite enamored by the fact that you joined us and mr bali uh, as usual people have just latched upon the insights but still i feel that it's a, such a vast subject that one hour 40 minutes or whatever time is there and especially when you raj and mr bali are there people just get enamored they just want to ask questions with the law and beyond law also uh we had surinder sharma somehow he, he has to come on the vote of thanks i'm just asking him he's the member of the bar council i suppose he has joined with some other name uh, mr surinder kindly come on the video he is a member bar council uh, he is the vice chairman of the bar council i am not able to see him mr Sh uh, sharma you can call on my mobile we that as it may uh, it has been a wonderful experience uh, a great insights uh, beyond law clc and ulf punjab university uh, do not have the words to express the gratitude because the insights we have always been discussing about law and mr bali has been kind enough to come on this platform giving the insights with his and the fact that he represents bcci he is a secretary of pca and otherwise also as a lawyer he is doing exceptionally well <clears throat> mr surinder uh, i am not able to see you on the platform just last uh, mr bali and mr yuvraj just one minute i am just checking him because he is a dear friend of ours uh, a vote of thanks from his side coming into it would be a fantastic thing uh i don't think he's there uh thank you everyone stay blessed uh stay safe and the inspiration which mr yuvraj has given us and needless to say mr bali who inspires as a cricketer he shows us how the balance has to be maintained between being a sports player being a uh, on the administrative side being as a lawyer uh, thank you everyone who have stayed connected with us uh and mr yuvraj singh i would like to say that people are just latching you on the live on facebook and we will be going on the youtube also on this channel and tomorrow another session we are having living relationship we are uh, at the contemporary law on that what is the scope of that we are having mr tanveer ahmed mr sujoy kantawala and raj khosla the famous art director and has been of mandra vedi on the platform to give his insights uh thank you everyone and my apologies to mr surinder sharma we couldn't see thank, thank you so much thanks a lot to you rajesh singh thank you and i i would and mr monty who gave the another flip to the entire show i will just uh, his, we also express thank you to mr monty banai sir and to all those participants who have mr harbhajan singh our message could be conveyed through mr yuvraj singh uh, i am unmuting mr uh, monty banai sir before we uh, sign off for the day yes mr monty yeah just uh, just want to say thank you for inviting me and um thank you for neat mali and also yuvraj as uh, to listen to your insights insightful views on sports law and, and and about your career as well um so thank you very much thank you everyone thank you everybody thanks a lot yuvraj you have uh, spared very precious time you are always an inspiration you have always been my hero though you are younger to me and you are the hero of our nation we are proud of you keep it up god bless keep on contributing towards this great country thank you so much
thank he you has, he, he, will, he will keep on motivating every one of us thank you vikas ji thank you preeti oh, can you uh, hear me yes uh, thank you vikas ji and thank you mr bali uh, you always been a very uh, so you like a big yeah. brother and uh, being a huge helping hand to me and thank you monty it was nice to chat with you and have your viewpoints and uh, last but not the least thank you to all my fans who been very supportive uh, in these tough times they've always had my back and uh, love you guys unfortunately i cannot answer to all of you i know you had a lot of messages but in time i would definitely uh, surely answer back to you thank you so much bye bye everybody stay safe uh, stay well thank you thank you so much